If you hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Ink Dependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at this ink. This is Leonardo Officiana Italiana Blue. I know it has some other fancier name because all of these Leonardo inks do have a fancier name that uh, they don't print on the bottles. And since I only got this as a bottle and not in a box, I don't know what that name is. So uh, we're just going to go with that. This ink actually came in the box with this pen, which is a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Pura. This is the orange Pura. It is a beautiful pen. It actually doesn't have this ink in it at the moment. Uh, so we're just going to set this aside. But it came with that pen as a pack in. So uh, let's talk about this. All right. Put that up there. Uh, they do come in a very nice 40 milliliter glass bottle and they go for about $17.50 a bottle. So it's not the cheapest ink out there, but for 40 mils, that's not crazy either. So high quality ink. Uh, I don't know. It's got an Italian flag there, but uh, it doesn't say where it's made. So. Well, I don't know. <laughs> All right, here it is on my usual Rhodia paper, 80 grams per square meter Rhodia stuff. This ink runs very wet, and that is a thing that is interesting given that it comes with Leonardo's, and one of my very wettest pens is a Leonardo Memento Zero, uh, and then I have a broad nib in a pen like this as well, which is likewise very wet. So um, the pen that it came with, this Pura, is not crazy wet. So I don't know. I don't think they really tuned the ink to the pens as like Pelican does, where they have super wet nibs all the time and their inks tend to run pretty dry. This one I think is just the way it is. So how is this as an ink? I think it's actually really nice. It's a really nice sort of medium shade of blue. It has some lighter tones in there. It's actually got some uh, sheen if you put down enough of it and it's easy to put down enough of it. Let me tell you what. I've had this in two pens for quite a while since like August or something, I guess, according to my notes. Although I've refilled this one uh, uh, at least once, maybe more. This is a Twisby VAC 700R, and uh, you can see it's still about half full. I've been using this a little bit sparingly. I had a uh, broad nib in here, actually, when it started out, as it says right there, and uh, that broad nib was way too wet for this ink. I had not, I had not calculated the, uh, the crazy wetness of this ink. So uh, I put this other nib, this is the nib actually that came with it. This is a 1.1 stub. And these run a little bit on the dry side and so that really helps to sort of corral this ink and make it far more usable. You can see up here there really isn't hardly any uh, of the shading. You get like a little bit of shading at the very tops of lines and that's approximately all you're going to get. Whereas here you see a, a better amount of shading because the nib is a little bit on the drier side and so it makes this a bit more usable. The other pen I've had it in is this one which is a really interesting interesting pen. This is a Zizo Visionary, which uh, I got at the DC show. It's uh, it's a very, it's a very interesting pen. Cool clip and all that. Nice, uh, nice nib here. This is a medium nib. And I think this medium nib is actually fairly, like fairly average, kind of a normal nib. But with this ink, it runs quite wet. And uh, I mean, I like it. I like the ink that it puts down, but it also puts down a lot more. And you'll see that it is a lot more, um, uh, a lot more, a lot more sheen on there as well. So that's that's these two on this Colodex card, the Twisby 1.1, very blue, the Zizo Medium. I mean, it's almost blurple because of all the sheen that's laying on top of it. So it's easy to put down enough to get sheen, which is a pretty cool thing about this about this ink. So shading, mild sheen, unless it's mild shading and serious sheen, depending on your nib, this pen will act very differently or this ink will act very differently. Okay, let's go ahead and do a water test and then we'll talk about it on some other on some other papers and things of that nature. So let's get this on the page. Bloop, there we go. Got a little bit of a shimmy. Oh, too much of a shimmy. I over shimmied. Often guilty of over shimmy shimmying. All right, mop that up. I have, remember to blot your uh, your spills, folks. <laughs> Otherwise, you just spread them around. Nobody wants that. All right, did we get it all? Eh, yeah, now we're good. All right, so lots of it sticking around. A uh, fair amount here left on the paper, which is not too bad. You could probably make out what you were writing, although a lot of it's going to be gone. So not water resistant, I wouldn't say. All righty, so here is what the chromatography looks like on this ink. Right here. And you can see there is a little bit left over here at the bottom 
that uh, <laughs> well, cat hairs on my desk. A lot here left over at the bottom, but most of it went up the sheet, at least a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it just kind of it's kind of stopped, which is interesting. It's like, nope, this is as far as I really want to go. There's not much separation here. It's a blue ink made of blue inks. So dope. All right, uh, so for papers, here we have our uh, 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper from Staples. And uh, this is the very worst paper. You're gonna have this in your office copier or whatever. And you can see that there's not much in the way of feathering here, although there is a little bit here and there. Uh, you do have a fair amount of bleed through on the back, but again, this is bad paper. And you can see like pretty much everything bled through, uh, at least a little bit. So it's not awful on here, but it's also not great. Now, better papers, we have the uh, Inky Fingers Notebook. This is wheat straw paper, and there are our two samples here on this wheat straw paper. So the Anderson Broad, nope, took that out. Look how much ink that was putting down, like so much. And then the stub looks uh, pretty dark as well, but you can definitely see a little bit of shading. It's not just blasting out of there. Uh, so I, I changed those things. And then the Zizo Visionary here. Uh, which I think looks really nice on this paper. You get some of that shading, you get a little bit of sheen. It looks real good when it isn't just uh, you know soaking into the paper. Next, and last, Tomoe River in an ink journal. Almost out of pages in this thing. I keep saying that, and then I keep forgetting to get a new one. So there we go. Uh, Vac 700, broad, too much. Stub, much better. Leonardo Blue, you get a whole lot of sheen in here. Look at those sheens at the ends of, and the tops and bottoms of all the letters. So if you really want to hit the sheen, hit this with something wet. And then here we have the visionary, which is uh, a little bit uh, a little bit less crazy than the than original broad. All right, there you go. Okay, let's look at a few inks that are like this one. Here is the Colodex uh, card that I've been looking at. Nice, nice looking blue. And this is, as a very normal sort of blue, a color that I'm not gonna show nearly every possible match because it's a very like medium blue. And so a lot of things look like it. This is Pin BBS Centurini, which I like a whole lot. And I think it uh, uh, it matches that fairly well, although it doesn't get as dark as uh, Leonardo Blue, I don't think, as it remains a little bit lighter. Private Reserve American Blue, this is the new current formula. Another very wet blue. If you're looking for a really nice looking but wet blue, that's another one of those. And we've got Esterbrook Aqua. I love Esterbrook Aqua. I think this is a great ink and uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter again than the uh, than the uh, Leonardo. And you don't really get the sheen that you'll get from a Leonardo in that Esterbrook Aqua, uh, but you can get this one with shimmer, which is kind of cool. And then lastly, almost lastly, Kala Navy. Uh, these are new dye-based inks from Kala instead of the uh, the nanoparticle ink that you get from them sometimes. The uh, those are, I love those, but this is a little bit different. So this is dye based and it's a, uh, it's fairly close. It's not an exact match, but, uh, it was in there and it was close enough. So I thought I'd give it a try. Also, we haven't really talked about these yet. I haven't done any reviews. I need to review some of these. Then lastly, uh, oh, no, it's not going to show in there. Let's take it out of the sleeve. These are the sleeves for my little one, my little cards that make them go in the the Rolodex. Uh, next to Color Supernova, and you do get some of that Supernova look in the Leonardo Blue if you put down enough of it, although probably not enough to call it uh, an exact match or anything like that. All right, so thank you very much for watching. This has uh, been Leonardo Officiana Italiana Blue. I'm getting some help from a cat currently. Hi, Mr. Nose. Good timing, I suppose. And uh, <laughs> uh, find this wherever you find Leonardo inks. I'm not, I haven't looked around to see where all they're held, but you can go and find them. I know, you're very distracting. All right, I gotta sign off. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.